today we're going to talk about vibrato and bends the way that I think is the best way to do them. Hi, I'm Eric Haugen. Here's my website, my Patreon, my Instagram. Check the description box below for the pedals and stuff that I'm using. These are custom Tom Brantley pickups and they are the strattiest strat pickups that ever did strat. They're great. I just put them in or I didn't put them in. I paid my friend to put them in because I am terrible at soldering. All right, vibrato. Here we go. I am tuned down a half step, so I'm going to be playing in my ninth fret C sharp blues scale. It's going to be your eighth fret if you're in standard tuning. It's just so Hendrixy to be a half step down. Now, vibrato, the way I see it, and there's a variety of ways to do it, but I think the best way for like lead playing, say I'm getting that ninth fret on my G string, eighth fret on your G string if you're in standard. By the way, there's slowdown gears in YouTube, down here or up there, depending on what device you're on. Spacebar pauses, arrows go forward and back. Three-quarter speed might be helpful for you. This is pretty simple today. It's just a review of a technique that I think we want to make sure we got. So, boom, finger comes in. One of the first things to realize is my knuckle is sitting back here at the seventh fret. And so that's the first thing. We got nice contact here with this hook. And then the back of my hand is also full contact. There's no air. And that's significant because what's going on here is what we want is actually a pretty tight finger. And all of this is just basically a hook that's rotating. It's a rotation to get good vibrato. It's not from your fingers this way. There are times you do this, like if you're holding a chord, you might be like, get one of them like that, but like true, like, true bluesy vibrato is going to be this style. So that's the first thing that you may have been doing wrong. If your hand was open and you're going, it's okay. It's just always going to be kind of wide and wiggly. Hook down and then watch this rotation down and back, down and back down, I think, yep, that's in the focal point, down and back, down and back. There's a really exaggerated one, but, you know, gets the point across. So it's not going up and down and back, it's just down and back. say up on that skinny string you have to go up and back because you got no you can't go down and back so that's the first thing uh, getting it with the index finger now say you want one of the other notes that 11th fret of our D string in your case if you're standard tuning 10th fret of your D string it's a similar thing, except all three are now lined up, but same thing. Fulcrum point is back here, actually, at this knuckle. Twist down and back, down and back, down and back. That's going to give you a nice controlled... things to avoid again. The open air. It's just going to, I mean, again, there are times when that's okay, but classic is going to be. Okay. These pickups are just too cool. I'll stop. Now, uh, bends. Let me just tune again because I'm abusing this. Yeah, I was. <laughs> uh, hey, he's holding pretty good. Okay, now bends, similar technique, similar death grip, you know, with this fulcrum point. Say I'm going to bend that 11 on my G. 10 on your G if you're in standard tuning, which is, you know, that's the, that's the middle of the blue scale. That's the fourth degree pushing its way to the five. Side note. If you don't know what intervals you're playing in the key when you're playing, you are at a little bit of a disadvantage in my book. 
Um, I don't know every note that I'm playing, but I have a pretty good idea of in a key. That's the seven going to the one. That's playing around with the fours. Here's my third. Major third. So yeah, people ask about, oh, what licks do you use? I don't use licks. I actually think about the whole key that I'm in, and then I think about what notes I'm throwing in there, because every note does have different powers. What am I talking about? Oh, vibratoing, yeah, on in front. No, we were talking about bends now. So similar technique, all three lined up. I forget now. Well, okay, just to review, same technique either way. If I'm vibratoing that, it's the same thing down and back. Now, if I'm gonna bend it, it's actually up. But again, the power is, yeah, I gotta stay in the focal point. Here I am, twist it. You know, it's, it's here, it's not from your fingers this way. I'm gonna say that again, it's not from your fingers this way. Watch out for this. This can give you tendonitis and carpal tunnel back here. You know, there are times when, you know, you might be in the middle of something and doing that's okay, but I do think that the classic blues dude bending is, it's, you know, back here, which is, you know, because wrist actually doesn't have muscle, but it's that muscle turning that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, a couple of things to think about with that note there. You know, it's always cooler to be a little bit under the note and work your way up. Overbending, Kirkhamit, um, always sounds a little bit weird. There are times when Hendrix will overbend. Oh, what's the one he does? That's one he'll do, but we're not worrying about that today. So bending that one, unless otherwise notated, a bend is two frets, so you got to listen. Now this one I happen to know is cool if you do it halvesies, because that's a full bend, a half bend, one fret. And a quarter bend, actually. So cool. Um, so, of course, that's true on the other strings, too. Say you had to bend this one. You'd really have to listen to make sure that 12 there, 11 if you're in standard, uh, equals 14. Don't go past it. It's weird. Um, what was I going to say? Other things to think about with bends, going back to that 14, that's a standard bend. There's also something called a pre-bend, where the note is bent before you hit it on, on notation. Now it'll show up as a straight arrow falling down. Other thing that they don't notate, which I wish they would, is what I call the pick catch. He caught the bend. That's Hendrix does that all the time. It creates a very different sound then. So yeah, sometimes you gotta think about the end of the note. Am I cutting it off or am I letting it fall back down? What else do I, do I want to talk about? Oh, things that people run into trouble with bends is the noises, sometimes depending on the action on your guitar. It's interesting, there's a line with bending. Too low, it's actually hard to bend the strings. Too high, it's also hard to bend the strings. My action is pretty, pretty damn low on my guitars, um, but not, actually pretty damn low. Not crazy low, but low. You know, people run into trouble with hitting those other strings when they're bending. And two solutions for that. One, bring this hand down. A 
lot of times I find students there are getting noise is because this hand is above the strings. So if he's sitting on them, delay. Pickups sound too good really is the main reason I wanted to um, make this video. All right, I'll digress. Um, it's funny because I know some people don't like strats. And I'm like, I get it, but like this sound of a strat neck pickup, that's a good one. It's like got this like chewy bite to it that no other neck pickup has. Um, and yeah, Tom nailed it. I just said, Tom, make me, make me stratty strat pickups. And he's like, I got it. So I think they're like 60s strat pickups, but you know, he hand winds them, scatter wound, does stuff with the stuff that I don't know what it is, but they sound so good. This is just a Mexican strat. <laughs> I, yeah, I got myself lost talking about bend foibles. Oh yeah, string noise. The other one is like, I find like index finger actually matters a lot. Like I was thinking I was showing one of my, one of my favorite students, Marin, we were working on, oh yeah. <laughs> that lick from War Pigs. Um, and yeah, she was getting some string noise there. And I was like, oh, I think it's index finger isn't, you know, sitting close enough to the other strings. So when you did that release there, you're getting, you know, those strings ringing out. So there's a lot about keeping your fingers really in contact. I talked about just about everything I wanted to talk about. You know, I didn't really teach anything today. Well, I mean, I did, you know, but you know, no specific licks. So as with everything, you want to go slow and I won't waste too much time talking about this because I could get this tattooed across my forehead and it still wouldn't be enough. Um, don't especially, well, it's okay. The human brain likes to keep making mistakes over and over and over again. So if you have weird, bad bend or vibrato habits, I'm telling you right now, I'm sorry, it's going to be very hard to break them. But if you can give, you know, give yourself the time and the patience and the space to do it, you can. It's just that the brain is a jerk about stuff like this. No, I'll just, I'll just keep doing my... <laughs> just it, it really wants to just go right back down that habit that it formed so you're gonna have to really be like no nope 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 I did it again and honestly a solo that I highly recommend for working on bands I'm always gonna say George Harrison uh, you know I've said it before uh, something um, uh, come together the Uh, Sultans of Swing, all those, all those Mark Knopfler things are good to work on. Uh, Santana is always good to work on. Honestly, Slash, uh, you know. Side note, a lot of Slash's playing is actually like Southern rock, kind of like almost there's like Skinnerd in there, I swear, like it's country licks, at least some of the, some of the, the ones I like. And then also, anyway, he does a lot, Slash, you know, Slash is great. Um, I think that's all I need to say. Yeah, go slow, because yeah, if you got bad habits, they're extra hard to break. Uh, happy after holidays. I'm in Nashville right now. When this uh, video comes out, I'm, I'm visiting my brother and his wife. I'm shooting this right before I get in the car and make a little drive from North Carolina to Nashville. Oh, look, slippers. <laughs> Cozy. All right, I'll see you later.